In this video tutorial, I am going to show you how to set up zones and lines, and describe the zones and rules interface in more detail. The six topics that I will cover are zones and rules interface, the difference between VCA presence and VCA surveillance, the object tracker, diagnostic information about objects, creating zones and lines, and finally non-detection zones. In order to set up zones and rules, you need to click on the setup link. A security login dialog window pops up, which requires you to enter your username and password. If you don't have your own username and password, then type in the default ID and password, which is root and pass, and click on OK. This will then take you to the main configuration interface. Click on VCA and then the Zones and Rules link, and this will then take you to the Zones and Rules interface. On the Zones and Rules interface, the first thing you will notice is the Tracking Display window, which shows all moving and stationary targets that are currently being tracked by the engine. Now if I double click on the Tracking Display window, to create a zone like so. You will notice on the right hand side of the page the Properties Inspector. The Properties Inspector allows the user to assign rules to zones like the one I have created. The bottom of the page shows the event history, which shows the history of objects that have triggered rules and generated alarms. In the event history you can resize the columns like so. Now going back to the Properties Inspector, those of you who have VCA Presence will have access to the Presence rule, whereas those of you who have VCA Surveillance will have access to the full set of rule based filters as well as the Presence rule. For VCA Surveillance, you need to calibrate the camera in order to make use of the Object Speed and Class filters, which are not shown here. Camera calibration is covered in a separate video tutorial. Going back to the tracking display, at the core of video analytics is an advanced object tracking engine that continually tracks moving and stationary targets. Each object that is being tracked by the tracking engine is highlighted with a yellow bounding box. If an object trips a detection rule, the bounding box turns red. Each object also has a trail that indicates the path the object has taken. Now by examining how the ends of the trails intersect a zone, it is possible to configure rules to generate events for a wide range of detection scenarios. If you right click on the tracking display window, select display, you can choose to view various diagnostic information about the objects, including the segmentation blobs and object properties such as height, area, speed and classification. To access the height, area, speed and classification options, you need to calibrate the camera. Calibration is demonstrated in a separate video tutorial. By default, the non-alarmed and alarmed objects are displayed, with the non-alarmed objects represented by yellow bounding boxes. The information displayed is a result of parsing and displaying the VCA metadata stream. The VCA metadata stream contains a complete description of every moving and stationary target, as well as additional diagnostic data to enable troubleshooting and optimum configuration. In order to save network bandwidth, the default metadata stream does not include a lot of diagnostic data, and this must be specifically enabled by clicking on the Advanced tab and selecting any of the options under the metadata format, such as Event, object, counting, blob, or tamper. Blob is a name given to groups of connected pixels produced by the object segmentation stage of the tracking engine. It is possible to view the blobs by enabling the blob display by ticking the blob checkbox underneath the metadata format and clicking apply. Going back to the zones and rules interface, by ticking the display blobs option you can now see this displayed as a group of connected blue pixels 
over the objects. It can be useful to display the blobs to analyze the performance of object detection. Sometimes the tracking engine may behave differently than expected and displaying the blobs can help define the reason for the difference. In order to detect events of interest, detection zones and lines must be defined first. Detection zones define an area of interest, whereas detection lines define a line instead of a region. To create a zone, double-click on the tracking display window. The new zone will appear in the display. You can also do this by right-clicking on the tracking display and selecting Zone Line and then selecting Create Zone. If you click back on the zone, every time you create a zone, default information about that zone is displayed in the Properties Inspector. For example, you can see the zone name, colour and type, which is in this case a detection zone. You can also see the different rules that can be applied to the zone. Let's give the zone a name. Let's call it Blue Zone. Let's change the colour to blue. Notice that you can also move the zone around the page without any restrictions. You can change the size and the shape of the zone by grabbing the nodes and dragging them across the page like so. It is also possible to create a zone with any shape by adding additional nodes. To add a node, double click on the edge of the zone like so. Notice that you can also do this by right clicking on the edge of the zone, select node and insert node. To remove nodes, right click on the node, notice how the node turns grey, select node and remove node. To remove the blue zone, right click anywhere on it, select zone and remove zone. To create a detection line, right click on the tracking display window and select zones lines and select create line. Let's give this line a name. Let's call it red line. You can move the line around the page without any restrictions. You can change the size of the line by grabbing the nodes and stretching them across the page like so. It is possible to create detection lines with any shape by adding additional nodes. You can add further nodes by double clicking anywhere on the line. To remove the line, right click on the line and select line, remove line. Video Analytics supports multiple overlapping zones and lines as shown in this example. You can click on them to view their properties or hover over them to highlight them. You can drag them over other zones and overlap them like so. You can save the configuration by right clicking on the tracking display, select file, select save to file, let's call it test and then click save. The file is saved as an XML document. Let's remove all zones and lines by right clicking on the tracking display, select zone line and remove all zones and lines. Then to retrieve the saved file, right click on the tracking display, select load from file, locate the test file, open it and there you have it. In some situations, especially where the scene is busy, objects tracked in some areas can interfere with detection zones in other areas. On a windy day, moving foliage can generate false alarms that in some situations could be tracked through a detection zone. In order to minimize such issues, it is possible to configure non-detection zones where nothing is detected or tracked. The live video shows a small car park in the UK 
with moving foliage on two trees. Here are two detection zones already set up on the screen and ready to be masked. By clicking on the blue zone and selecting None Detection, you get a cross-hatched looking pattern. After clicking Apply, nothing will be tracked in that area. Let's do the same with the green zone and click Apply. Although the trees have not moved much, it is always a good idea to mask out areas that you don't want the object tracker to track. 